Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So let's talk about angled ceilings. If you're in a room with an angled ceiling, a sloped ceiling that kind of starts low on one side, slopes up to the other side, it can be a bit confusing understanding what's actually going on in the room, how that affects the acoustic response. But more importantly, how does the, that affect how you treat the room, how you best work with the room? That's what I want to talk to you about in this video to give you a, a guideline, an overview of the effects that happen that you can expect when you're working in a room, setting up your studio in a room with an angled ceiling, and then how to best approach this type of room as well. Spoiler alert, it doesn't really change much. You still have to go through the exact same steps. And that's also why at this point, I just want to mention my home studio treatment framework that you can download for free at the link in the description. These are my five steps to treating a home studio. No matter what shape or size the room is, these five steps will guide you through the process of treating your room from start to finish, from setting up your speakers, all the way to the end of calibrating your system. So if you're in the process of treating your home studio, or if you are stuck at some step in the process, make sure you download my home studio treatment framework, figure out where you're getting stuck, what you may have missed, and what to focus on and what to ignore. You can find all that for free at the link in the description. So let's jump in and try and figure out what actually happens in a room with an angled ceiling. And I'm gonna split this up into two parts, the base region, the modal region, and then kind of the mid and high frequencies where all the reflections happen, right? So let's think about the modal region first. How does an angled ceiling affect the room modes in your room. So I pulled up audio modal here and I modeled a generic room with an angled ceiling. Basically what I wanna show you here is how the modal distribution, the room modes change when there's an angled ceiling in the room. And what I really want you to take away here is that the room modes don't really change all that much unless we're talking about a very, very steep angle, right? So here we've got our first axial mode front to back, second axial mode side to side. And as we kind of step through this, and I can actually start the animation as well just for fun, we can see that things don't really change all that much apart from this first one now here where you can see that there is no pressure happening at the floor kind of front wall section if we consider this to be the front wall, the, 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 the lower wall, if you will, with the lower ceiling. Yeah, this is the first room mode where the pressure distribution kind of changes in comparison to an, uh, a, a rectangular room. Yeah, but it's still not a, a crazy change either. So if I continue stepping through this, you can see that most of these room modes remain pretty much the same. Yeah, there's no crazy change to this pattern at all. It all kind of stays the same. And what does that really tell us about how we need to deal with this room? Well, it just shows us that we need to do the same thing that we need to do in any room. And that is when we're, t when we're trying to work with these room modes, which is primarily a, uh, a, a question of placing our listening position correctly, what we need to do is find the spot in the room where the balance in the sound pressure and all these different room modes is roughly balanced against each other. If you've heard about the 38% rule, yeah, it's a guideline on placing your listening position that follows the same principle. It basically directs you towards the right spot when we're talking about rectangular rooms, the right spot in the room where the pressure distribution between these room modes is roughly balanced out. And we want to find that same spot in a room with an angled ceiling. The only difference is that it's not going to be perfectly located at this 38% uh, distance of in, in considering the length of the room, right? It's going to be somewhere else. And to be frank, this is going to be the case for most rooms because almost no room is a perfect rectangle and even if it is by shape rectangular 
depending on the construction of the walls, the materials that are used in the walls, the placement of doors and windows, we can still have a change in modal distribution that is on par with the change that we could see with, that we can see with an angled ceiling. So what do we do in that case? Well, we have to test the room for its pressure distribution, for its modal distribution. And the easiest way to do that is to use your ears to do what I call the base hunter technique. It's a simple listening test, a structured listening test that basically allows you to test the room for its room modes and then make an educated decision on where the that modal distribution, the pressure distribution in the room modes is roughly balanced. And of course, if you need more guidance on that, make sure you download my home studio treatment framework because I've also linked to the base hunter technique, a, a basic step-by-step -step guide to the base hunter technique in there as well. So that's kind of room modes checked off, right? There isn't really that big of a change in comparison to a rectangular room. And in terms of actually working with the room, nothing changes. We still have to go through the same approach of making sure we find what I call the low and sweet spot, that spot in the room where the room modes roughly balance out. And that's where we place our listening position, right? So at that point, room modes done. So now, Let's move up the frequency spectrum and look at reflections. How do reflex reflections change with an angle ceiling? So now we're in Amray, which is another free to use tool that you can find. And I'll link to both modal, audio modal and Amray in the description as well. So you can check that out. And this is a simple tool to simulate in two dimensions the reflection pattern in any shape depending on the placement of the speaker and the ear. And what you can see here, if we're looking at this room from a side perspective, right? So this is the front of the room. This is the back of the room. Here's the speaker and here's the listener. Yeah, And I've just simulated first order reflections. And what we're seeing here is that the kind of the, the center, the reflection point, the center of where the energy gets reflected kind of shifts forward a bit because of the angle, right? You got to remember that when we're thinking about reflections in a room, it's kind of like playing pool, billiards. Yeah, it's just a question of geometry. So when we're looking at the floor, for like, for example, right, speaker and ear are at the same height, and the, the spot for the floor reflection is right in the middle between the speaker and the, and the listening position, the ear. With the angled ceiling, that spot just kind of moves forward a bit because that's when we get that inbound angle equals outbound angle angle reflection pattern where the energy actually reflects back to the listener. Yeah, And if you make the slope of the ceiling even steeper, that spot is going to shift even further forward. That's all that happens, right? How does that change how we treat the room? Well... Again, not much changes. The approach to figuring out where our treatment for reflections uh, to, to absorb reflections has to go, still the same principle. Yeah, we have to, we, we can use the kind of the mirror technique where we move a mirror along the offending surface until we see the speaker in the mirror. Yeah, and that means uh, that we found the spot where that energy gets reflected. And that's where our treatment needs to go. Apart from that shift in position, nothing changes. It's still the same. So the, the one thing that I haven't mentioned here and that I kind of just took for granted in these, uh, these two models is that the listening position and speakers were set up symmetrically in relation to the angled surface. And that's really the one thing that you have to watch out for when you're Think, talking about angled ceilings or even just in general oddly shaped rooms because we want a stable and perfectly balanced stereo image the room around our listener speaker setup ideally needs to be perfectly symmetrical as well and so when we're thinking about an angled ceiling we need to basically locate position our setup in a, facing a, a wall in such a way that the angled ceiling still 
allows for symmetry between the left and right speakers. That's the, the kind of one requirement that you have to watch out for. And that's also the one thing that, that potentially an, an angle ceiling can make difficult. Obviously, if your room is laid out in such a way with the angled ceiling that you can't really position your setup, your listener speaker setup symmetrically in the room, then you're going to get an asymmetrical response from your speakers. Again, it's not the end of the world. It's just one of the many things that we're trying to optimize symmetry, right? And you can do a lot with both absorption and also um, just working with the speaker volumes in order to compensate for any, any asymmetries in the stereo setup. So that's kind of the consequence there. If you absolutely can't get local symmetry around your setup, then you have to find a way to change the response of the room, for example, by placing absorption in such a way that the asymmetrical response gets reduced to some extent. Yeah? It's never going to be perfect, but uh, you can still totally make it work. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. It's not that tricky. It's basically just a matter of understanding that the room mode pattern changes and you can mess with something like audio modal to figure out what that actually looks like in your room. If nothing else, it's a fun exercise to do, but it doesn't actually change anything about how you approach the actual treatment of the room, finding your low end sweet spot, placing your listening position in that spot where the room modes balance out, analyzing the reflection pattern in the room, figuring out how the spots where the energy gets reflected changes because of those angled surfaces and then just accounting for that in the placement of your acoustic panels, your absorption. All right, I hope that helps. As always, with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.